Hey guys, so a lot of you have been requesting cooking videos for as long as I can remember, so I'm finally presenting you a cooking video today. We're gonna be doing a week of meals that I've been eating in quarantine. It's not really specific to quarantine, I just put it in there, I don't know, <laughs> clickbaity, I don't know. But I cook all the time, almost every day, so I just thought I would show you some of the meals that I made this week. This is a realistic uh, video, so it's not shot super uh, well. <laughs> I'm really selling this video to you guys, right? <laughs> anyway, it's filmed kind of vlog style. It's just realistic, me cooking in the kitchen with you guys and showing you what I'm making and how I make it. So <laughs> any recipes that I use that are not my own, I will link down below because I do that all the time. Anyway, this is all obviously Obviously vegetarian some things can be made vegan so hopefully this gives you some good ideas for how to eat a little healthier right now if you I mean a lot of people are cooking at home right now so hopefully this gives you a little more inspiration in the kitchen so you can make some variety of meals <laughs> so tonight's recipe comes straight from Bon Appetit and this is actually the first recipe that I ever made from Bon Appetit and it was super impulsive I watched the video and I was like I have everything in this video. I'm gonna make that right now. And I just whipped it up and it was amazing. So I've made this one other time before. I'm gonna make it tonight because it sounds really good and I have all the ingredients. I love this recipe because it's with a lot of pantry staples and just things that a lot of people already have on hand. So it's really affordable, pretty healthy, I would say. It has decent protein and can be made vegan very easily. So I think it is a very good recipe. <laughs> Obviously not my own though. I will link the actual one down below. So the re I didn't even tell you what it is. It is a brothy, chickpea pasta. I am changing a few of the things in the recipe so it's not exactly like it, but you will need a can of chickpeas or garbanzos, some peeled tomatoes, whole tomatoes, uh, whatever pasta you want. Today I'm using ziti and an onion. Uh, instead of parmesan, I'm using some unexpected cheddar from Trader Joe's because it's vegetarian. In the recipe that calls for fresh rosemary, I don't have any of that right now, so I'm just gonna use dried and then we need some red pepper flakes, that's optional, and then salt and pepper. So once your onions are starting to caramelize like that, you're going to add some thinly sliced garlic, and then just cook that for a few minutes. You only need about a half can's worth of tomatoes. And then, with clean hands, you really wanna get in there and crush your tomatoes up. And yes, I know it's cringy that I'm doing this with jewelry on, oops. <laughs> Next, you wanna add your red pepper flakes. I feel like guys are a little spicy. And then some rosemary. Again, ideally it's fresh. I only have dried right now. So when things are starting to brown like that, you wanna add your tomatoes and the one can of rinsed chickpeas. And then cook this for about 10 minutes so the tomatoes can thicken and you can get rid of that like can flavor. So the tomatoes have thickened up a little bit, so now it is time to add four cups of just water. And then it calls for six ounces of pasta. Most uh, pasta packages are 16, so I'm just gonna eyeball it. Kind of do less than half a box. <laughs> And then you crank the heat a little bit to medium high and bring to a simmer or boil and then just simmer that until the pasta's done. And I love that it's all in one pot. The pasta's cooked in all those delicious flavors so the pasta gets really flavorful. So of course you wanna make sure to taste it, make sure the salt level is good. I'm gonna add all this cheese and just stir that in which is gonna add a lot of flavor as well. If you want it to be a little thicker, what you can do is crush some of the chickpeas while those are cooking. This also calls for fresh parsley, which I do not have, and you can add other fresh herbs if you want to. And then to garnish it, you're gonna wanna have some like shaved cheese, just the same cheese that you added earlier. And then top with black pepper, and there you have brothy chickpea pasta. So delicious, healthy, cheap, and easy. It takes like an hour to cook overall because of all the steps, but generally it's still really easy one pot meal, and I am obsessed with it. Let's dig in. It's very hot. Don't know if I can eat this yet, but... <laughs> 
Mm. Okay, tonight we are having Mexican food. How authentic it's gonna be, I don't know. So yesterday I prepped the beans. So we like to make our beans from the dry beans. So I rinsed them and soaked them overnight. And then this morning I rinsed them again and then filled the pot to just like an inch of water above the beans and then cooked them for about an hour. Oh, I also threw in two bay leaves and some salt while they cooked. So now I just have a giant pot of beans. We like to make a lot of beans because we eat those throughout like a week, week and a half. And then we're also gonna be eating some Spanish rice tonight and some chili rellenos, which this is gonna be what our third attempt at making chili rellenos. So don't judge us too harshly, please. It's a tricky dish on like medium heat and then we need a cup of rice i'm just gonna rinse that we're going to add just some oil to the pan and then add the rice and then we're just gonna toast this until it's like brown i don't know so the rice calls for one and a half cups of broth usually it's chicken broth i think in this kind of recipe but I'm gonna use veggie broth and this is the kind that I prefer to get instead of getting like the cartons this like concentrate stuff is so good and it's just so much more economical so I'll take like a teaspoon full I guess I don't know I kind of just eyeball it and then I have one and a half cups of warm water and you just stir it in so once your rice looks toasty like that you don't want to burn it you want to add your one and a half cups of stock And then an eight ounce can of tomato sauce. And then these are the spices and seasonings that I'm going to add to it. And I just kind of eyeball it because we like it a little spicy. So I'm adding some cayenne pepper, which I don't think normally you put in it, but yeah. Now while the rice is going, it is bean time and prepping the chilies, which Ryan's usually in charge of that, so he's gonna do the chilies. He's just gonna char them on our gas stove. Um, for the beans, I'm gonna use some cloves of garlic, half of an onion, and then obviously these are already cooked beans, but I'm gonna be following a recipe for refried beans, but we prefer not to smash them um, into refried beans. We just leave them whole. I'm gonna add like that much butter, I'm using earth balance, to my pan. You could be pretty rough with the peppers. Looks like I ruined them, but <laughs> they're good. For the beans, you also need more veggie broth. And then once your onions look like that, we're going to add the garlic. Next, I'm gonna pour in about a quarter, a third a cup of broth. And then I'm gonna use that cup, scoop some beans out of here and add those in, yum. And then I use the same seasonings that I used in the Spanish rice. The rice is done. I'm just gonna cook the beans and simmer those for a little while until they're infused with the flavor. Just maybe like 10 minutes simmering those. So the next step, is to make the batter for the chili relleno. So what we're gonna do is separate two or three. I don't, I still don't know. Three, let's go all out. Okay, we're gonna do three eggs. And then you beat the egg whites until stiff peaks. Pepe does this all evening. Here, do me a favor. Yeah. Can you pour the egg white into the glass bowl? We have this nice old fashioned beater because we don't have an electric mixer, so it takes forever. So the recipe I'm following calls for two cloves of garlic, but we're feeling lazy, so. Yeah, we're so lazy. <laughs> Is that too much? No. <laughs> the beans are done, so they're just gonna chill while we finish making dinner. I timed everything pretty wrong, but that's okay. So yeah, he's just adding veggie broth. Okay, once you've got your stiff peaks, you're gonna take your egg yolks, 
Dump those in. And then we're gonna add a little cayenne pepper. And then you just fold the yolks in. You folded it. <laughs> Okay, no judgment zone, right? We're putting a stick of cheese in the chili rellenos. It tastes good though. Yeah, it really does. This is Gouda, which I know is not the traditional cheese to put in this. <laughs> we like to experiment, okay? We yeah. like it. This is the fun part, chili relleno. You could pick whatever cheese you want. Exactly. So after you peel the uh, peppers, you just make a small incision on the side. Like you're starting surgery, and you shove your flavor cubes in there. And then to avoid the oil getting inside of this while you're frying, you, like you're done with surgery, you suture the cut with a little toothpick. This part's tricky, but if yeah. you mess up, not a big deal. Yeah. We, we messed up and... It was, was still good. Yeah, it, it was still good. Me. The kind of sour cream we use this is the best sour cream it tastes so good it's so runny so it's more of like a dressing and yes Ryan's wearing my shirt just so you guys know that's my shirt <laughs> this is my shirt okay Pepe is gonna sing to us <laughs> this is probably one of our favorite meals that we get to make it is a little bit more lengthy in process because there's so many steps and different like sides and everything but it's one of our favorites Got a chunk of cotija right here and an optional side is tostadas, which we love a lot. Yeah, we eat a lot of tostadas. <laughs> and then our kitchen looks like this when we're done. So I was just eating my weight in macaroni salad and then I realized I should probably just make dinner if I'm gonna do that. Tonight we are having BLTs, but obviously I'm gonna replace the bacon. You can get like Morningstar fake bacon and it's okay, but I highly recommend using tempe bacon and I actually just kind of make my own. It's not really flavored like bacon, I guess. But I just do like a marinated tempe and it is so delicious and so savory. Tempe is definitely one of my favorite, favorite faux meats, mock meats or whatever you want to call it. It's just fermented soybeans. So it's a little less processed than the like Morningstar Gardein Beyond kind of situation. So this meal is going to be very, very basic. I'm just putting together a sandwich essentially, but I did want to show you how I make my tempe bacon or marinated tempe. This is also really great in Asian dishes. You can like marinate this with literally anything you have in your fridge. Sometimes I'll just eat it as it, well, I cook it first, but I'll just eat it because it tastes really good. So I prepared this yesterday, so I'll go ahead and show you that footage. I basically just cut the tempe into strips. You can cut it into cubes whatever you your preference is and then for the marinade I use soy sauce a Worcestershire sauce a liquid smoke we got some seasonings in there I use a little bit of hoisin sauce I think it adds a little bit of sweetness and a lot of flavor and then I add some water to make it like extra liquidy so it can cover all of the tempe and then I just marinated it overnight so the first step is just a sandwich but we're gonna cook the tempe I have to do medium heat now I'm using a non-stick pan so I'm not gonna use any oil you could obviously do that if you wanted to also I'll probably cook it in a little bit of its liquid in some of the marinade I 
done this next step first, but uh, I'm gonna toast my bread. So I'm using dill rye. It's just the bread that we have on hand. I would use any kind of bread. Doesn't, I'm not really picky. Sourdough actually is my favorite for BLT, so we don't have any right now. And then I'm gonna put some mayonnaise on it before I toast it. I don't know if that's controversial. Warm mayonnaise. other fixins I love Havarti cheese on it it's like my favorite cheese of all time we're gonna do some beefsteak tomato on there and some butter lettuce which is like my favorite lettuce of all time and we have our tempe bacon I'm so excited. It's such a simple sandwich, but it is so good. <laughs> mm. That tempe is just so flavorful and so savory. Like, highly recommend in a BLT. Dare I say BLTs are like the perfect sandwich? Actually, you know what it's missing? Some pickles. I gotta add some pickles. <laughs> Now it's the perfect sandwich. All right, today we are making another pasta dish and this one I'm really excited about because I've never made this before. Every other recipe I've made at least one other time before my cat again. Um, but tonight is a new recipe that I haven't tried yet. So we're gonna experiment together. I'm gonna show you how I'm making it. I'll link the recipe below that I'm following. Of course, it's not my recipe. Tonight we're gonna be making a roasted bell pepper, chipotle pepper and adobo spaghetti, I guess. So these are all the ingredients that I'm going to use. We need some heavy whipping cream, uh, spaghetti. I think it calls for angel hair pasta actually, but we have this. Uh, we got butter, garlic, onion. It calls for half of an onion and a couple shallots. And I don't have any shallots right now, so I'm gonna use a whole onion, tomato paste, uh, of course, red bell pepper and chipotles and adobo sauce, uh, basil, and then for spices, it's just gonna be smoked paprika and white pepper and sea salt. The onions have started to brown that's when you add the roasted red bell peppers so i forgot to record uh which is great because i can't go back um i added the two cloves of garlic to this and two chipotle peppers and adobo. I just did like two tablespoons from the container with a little bit of juice in there. Oops. <laughs> Next we're gonna add about two tablespoons of tomato paste. Can I just say how this smells right now? Oh my God, I'm so excited to eat this. So after that cooks for another minute or two, you're gonna turn off the heat and then you wanna fish out your chipotle peppers. And just place those on the side. And then you're just gonna chop this into fine pieces. Which I'm not sure why we have this step because the next step is going to be putting everything in a food processor. <laughs> so my pasta is done cooking, but before I drain it, I wanna reserve a little bit of pasta water for later. So now we're going to take this mixture and carefully put it into our food processor. And then you wanna add back in your chipotle peppers. And then we season, so I'm gonna be using white pepper. That's too much. <laughs> Smoked paprika. I'm using some lightly dried basil. And then some salt, but I need two hands to put this in. <laughs> and then we pop this on and blend a little. 
It says you still want it to be chunky and pea size amounts are okay, so that's where I'm stopping. <laughs> then you add the mixture back into the pan, turn the heat back on, and then you wanna add one cup of heavy cream. And then you just cook this until it's thickened. Next, you wanna add your drained pasta. Add some of your pasta water. And then you can garnish with a little bit of cheese if you want. I'm going to personally just use a little bit of basil. This looks so good, let's do a taste test. <laughs> I've never tried a recipe like this before. I've had all the ingredients before, so I can kind of guess how it's gonna taste and like the smell. I can't even emphasize that enough, but look at it. <laughs> oh my God. The heat in it is so perfect, wow. Amazing, 10 out of 10, recommend. Oh, he wanted to say hi. Not really, he wants food. I was gonna say the D word. Tonight's dinner is going to be yet another very easy one. I think I'm gonna do like seven dinners in this video, to be honest. Sorry about my cat, he's gonna meow for a minute. Um, so tonight we're gonna do just roasted veggie bowls. So I like to do like a grain. I'll probably do a white rice because I'm feeling, you know, a little extra tonight instead of my healthy brown rice. And then I'm gonna roast whatever vegetables we have in the fridge, which we actually have a bunch right now because we recently went to the grocery store. So I stocked up and I'm gonna roast a bunch of stuff Put it on some rice. Really simple, <laughs> wow. Roasted vegetables are easily one of my favorite foods of all time. If you hate vegetables, definitely try out this method for eating them because they are so good. In case you guys were curious, this is how we store our grains. It's kind of a mess in here with the teas. Oh, we're overflowing, okay. I'm gonna use white rice tonight, but we also have brown rice. This is brown rice mixed with lentils. That is quinoa. We have couscous and lentils oh and sushi rice we make sushi a lot so here are the veggies that i'm going to roast tonight my favorite is brussels sprouts we don't have any right now so i'm gonna chop up some cauliflower i'll probably roast like half of this this is gonna be the main star of the show here we have some kale asparagus carrots and i have half an onion so i'm just gonna throw that on there our baking sheets have definitely seen better days if you have any tips on cleaning these please let me know beautiful tray of veggies so I'm just going to drizzle with oil this is canola oil you can use whatever oil you prefer one of my favorite spices in the world mrs. dash salt free onion and herb this stuff like transforms roasted vegetables it is so good and you can put as much of it you want on there because there's no salt the onion salt from Trader Joe's is the best onion salt ever so I'm gonna put some of that on there can you tell I like onions just a little bit? Put a little smoked paprika, especially on the cauliflower. Then I'm just gonna add some freshly ground pepper. And then with clean hands, you just mix it all up. So next I'm gonna start the rice. I'm just gonna rinse one cup of white rice. And then honestly, I'm just gonna pop it in my rice cooker with a little bit of veggie broth, uh, like the paste stuff in the water and cook the rice like that. So I had to take the kale out about 15 minutes into cooking because it was gonna burn, which normally happens. That's why I usually have two pans and then I will separate the veggies based on how long they take to cook. Here are the glorious vegetables all done and caramelized and beautiful. And our rice is done. we 
have the beautiful bowl of rice and veggies. This is super, super simple to make and cheap, so cheap. There's of course not a ton of protein in this dish, but I try to balance it out with other things. So for like lunch, I had a Beyond Burger and I made it in and out style and it was so delicious. But this is one of my favorite meals. I could eat this every single day. It is so good. I'm not gonna add any sauces or anything. Sometimes I'll whip up my own like honey mustard kind of sauce or even just some soy sauce on there. But right now I just wanna eat it pure as is, no sauces or anything. Everything's seasoned really, really well, including the rice because I added the veggie broth. So yeah, that is my veggie bowls. I'm gonna go eat this now. <laughs> Thank you.